Hi everybody, this is Jennifer. Welcome to my channel where I talk about books, music, movies, and anything else that takes my fancy. Um, today I'm doing a review of sorts, I think. I've never done one before. But, um, so I read The Strain Trilogy by Guillermo del Toro and Chuck Hogan and I wanted to discuss it. So that's what we're doing. We're going to discuss The Strain Trilogy. Um, the Strain Trilogy consists of three books. The Strain that came out on 2000, in 2009, The Fall that came out in 2010, and The Night Eternal that came out in 2011. Um, they, I, I listen to the audiobooks, I don't have, so I don't have copies right now, but I listen to all three books on audiobook. The first one was read by, um, oh, who is that dude? Ron Perlman. Ron Perlman. There we go. And then the second was read by somebody who was not Ron Perlman, but they all did very good jobs and nothing, like, nothing about the narration took anything away from the reading experience for me. Um, so, hold on, let me, I kind of need notes. Um, so let's, let's talk about like the main characters. Um, there's Abraham Satrakian. Uh, he is an old man, an old Jewish man, uh, who runs a pawn shop in New York. This is all taking place in the New York City area, by the way. New York and New Jersey mainly. Um, then there's Ephraim Goodweather, Zach Goodweather, and Kelly Goodweather. Um, Ephraim is a doctor for the CDC. Um, there's Vasily Fett, who is a, a rodent exterminator in New York. Uh, there's Nora Martinez, who is one of F's colleagues. There's Gus. There's Mr. Quinlan, the master. There's also hmm, sorry I blanked on his name. It's the leader of the Stoneheart group. Crap. I'll remember it. Okay, so yeah, this all starts when a plane comes into JFK. I think the New York one's JFK. I, I, or maybe LaGuardia. I don't know the airplanes, the the uh, airports in New York. I'm sorry. Um, and the second it lands, it goes dark, and when they finally get on the plane, everybody except four people are dead. So the CDC is called in because all these people have died and they don't know how it's happened. And this is when this all, this is how this all starts. So What's going on in the first book, mainly, is them trying to figure out what's going on. And there's a whole lot of politics about it because the CDC is a government agency. There's also... Anyway, so it follows, one, the four survivors, Ephraim Goodweather, his family, and the CDC who's checking this out and Abraham Satrakian, who's trying to get to Ephraim, F and the good and the and the CDC so he can tell them what he knows because this is something he's not the exact circumstances with the airplane but he knows what's going on here and it, it there's also a whole bunch of stuff about an eclipse because this takes place right when there's a big eclipse that's supposed to be happening a total eclipse so the first part is discovering how this whole thing starts. The second part, the fall, deals with finding out more about what the plan is 
Uh, this is all being caused by this master vampire. And we're figuring out what his plan is and what his human helpers have planned. And so we're following F and then the team and Abraham's truck in while they're trying to stop the master's plan from happening. Um, the Night Eternal takes place two years after the events of the, the, the fall. So this is dealing with a continuing struggle against the master and his plans for the human race. Um, I'm trying very hard not to spoil too much, but it's kind of hard, especially when you're dealing with like a trilogy because to talk about the later books, it's kind of hard. So, I really liked these books. Um, I liked some of them more than others. I really thought the second one was the best one, personally. Um, it was just more faster paced. And the first, the first book of the trilogy leaves too many things unanswered and you get most of the answers in the second book but I still don't think it excuses the first one so you know when you're dealing with the second one first there's not quite as much world I mean it's New York City present day it's not like it doesn't take place in an alternate dimension so there's not a whole lot of world building but there's a lot of politicking there's a lot of what exactly is going on here so I think that slows the first one down and the fact that the first one like I said leaves too many questions unanswered the second one is it's shorter the second one's shorter and it's faster paced because now you know kind of what's going on and it's like is this gonna work or isn't and so I like the second one a bit better. Uh, the third one deals with the aftermath of the events of the second one, which I'm not going to tell you what they are. Um, and the third one has some issues too because it introduces elements in the third that are no, there's no real inkling of them in the first two. And I feel like also in the third book, there's some stuff set up in the second book that looks like it's supposed to be like have its conclusion well have its day in the third book and then it kind of it gets touched on a little and then it gets dropped which bugs me as it should um, so that kind of bothers me about the third book but in the end, I did end up liking all three of them. Um, yeah, so that's my main feel about the all three books. I thought the writing was pretty good. Um, I mean, it wasn't spectacular. It was serviceable to the plot, but it wasn't like spectacular. But overall, I thought it was good. There was nothing about it that really distracted me from the story which is my biggest deal with, with the writing. Um, you know, it has to service the story and it has to like not have too many issues where it's like really this. So yeah, all in all, I thought it was a very good reading experience. Um, so I'm gonna go over some of the themes that I liked from the book because one of my major things is I like I like books with story. I also like to have a little bit more. Uh oh, there goes somebody's car alarm. Hope you can't hear that. Um, so so yeah, um, a couple of things that are going on there. Um, there's a lot of political stuff going on in here, and so and a lot of commentary about how the rich people 
sell out humanity to help this master person and how they manipulate the politicians and get allies inside the government to help them out. I thought that was interesting. Um, there's also, you know, the commentary, there's, there's a whole lot of commentary in here, which I really liked. I, I mean, it might bother somebody, but I, I, I enjoyed it. Um, about the way humanity works that aids the master in helping get his plan going. Um, our, our need to maintain comfort and our unwillingness, unwillingness to really look at things and our like our need to maintain maintain normality even in the face of the obviousness of this is not normal um let's see uh okay so there's so many family dynamics in here um f f from good weather who's the main protagonist he is dealing with his divorce from his wife Kelly and his struggle with custody of his son. Um, they're in family counseling to try to. When this this plane incident in, incident takes place, he's actually has custody of his son in a trial run to see if he can have if him having custody of his son would work. And so this botches up all the plans, and then it continues to botch up all the plans going forward, but I'm not going to tell you how because that would, that would mess things up. But there's this constant struggle with F, this fear that he's going to be replaced in his son's eyes, first by Kelly's boyfriend and then by this master vampire. So there's that going on. Um, there's also another father-son relationship between the master and... This other character who I'm not going to talk about. But there's a destructive relationship there. And then there's a mentorship relationship between Abraham Satrakian and Vasily Fett, who's the um, exterminator. So there's a father, there's father and son dynamics going all through this book, which I, I appreciated. Um, there's also, you know, thematically there's this thing going on with familial love and bonds. Um, this master, he creates others of his kind and those, those are drawn back to their loved ones in order to bring them into the fold. So the, these familial bonds move into the vampire realm with their loved ones and they they're just drawn to their old life and their old family to bring them in. So there's that. Um, yeah, so the last thing I'm going to talk about is when I was first starting reading books about vampires and reading like references to them, a lot of stuff that goes on, uh, you know, dating back to Dracula, is the Victorian repression and that the vampirism as a as a mode of exploring that. Well, here in the 21st century when you have vampire stuff, there's not a lot of sexual repression to go around unless you live in certain areas. And so that that might still be, that still might work thematically sometimes. But if we're looking for a more modern metaphor when using vampirism, uh, especially in the third book, what got to me was the vampirism as a metaphor for our current eating practices and our farming practices. Um, so, you know, 
we do a lot of stuff like force breeding um, and then selecting for certain genetic traits in our food and this is paralleled in the third book and so it's really it's really obvious how vampirism now can be a metaphor for our modern farming and animal husbandry practices. Um, the vampires, they openly refer to uh, people as chattel, as food. So, you know, if you're looking for a metaphor of how we treat our food, um, the vampires in this book can be seen as a good substitute for that. Um, and that that was one of the biggest things I got from here. So yeah, all in all, I really liked it. Um, first book kind of started a little slow, but I thought it picked up throughout the second and the third books. And in the third book, my main issues were some stuff being introduced in the second book that was not followed up on completely in the third book. and some things that were introduced in the third book that really weren't set up very well in the first or second. But all in all, I thought it was a very interesting story and I was very entertained by all the books. So if you've read them or if you have your comments on any of the books, please feel free to make a comment. Uh, also, you can like, share, and subscribe. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Bye.